Yo, Daddy. I gotta make it real careful that I don't do this while I'm talking because you can only imagine what that's like on your end, man. Um, check this out. First off, if I didn't know that people ate beef, and I'm, I guess I'm, I'm setting up a world in which people eat beef. But if I didn't know that that was like human food, I would, I would think it was dog food when I smell it. Yeah, I used to eat a lot of beef. I can tell you how many Taco Bell tacos I had in my life. At least 500? No, not that many. Some gross amount. And I use the word gross in two ways. I want to... I want to... That's something I do, I think, when I'm insecure. I say, I want to say this. And then I start saying it rather than just jump in, you know? It's like, I want to dive in. With, in the coming, with the coming revolution, when we start putting people in jail for their crimes against humanity and the economy, um, we have to remember what happened in 1930s in Germany when they basically were starving and, and poor and lining the streets and turned towards the 1% of their time, which was the Jewish population in the country, more or less a lot of these wealthy business owners, and they basically pinned it on them because they were kind of led to by the media. Um, and I think that has been happening, and it was one of the things that kind of upset me with Occupy Wall Street. It's not about 1%. and it, uh, Realistically, 85 people in the, in the world of 7 billion own half of the wealth in the world, roughly. 85 people. So when this shit starts hitting the fan and like CEOs are going down uh, because they've been forging shit, I mean, realistically, you could, we could turn and say that the Federal Reserve is illegal. You know, it was, it was like Woodrow Wilson was like pinned into, into signing it, which makes it not legal. If someone's like hell at gunpoint to sign something, it's not constitutionally legal. I don't know what exactly happened with Woodrow, but um, he, did, he wasn't happy about it, about signing that, he said. So when this, you know, assuming that the people like these corporate heads, uh, these big bankers like Jamie Dimon and, you know, Okay, so, you know, Jamie, not to point you out in particular, but people of your buddies that can loan you 70 billion on a whim, you know, when this, when this starts, when the military turns on you and you're thrown in a prison cell, we have to remember that it's not right to just take it to these people. As angry as we are, I mean, literally, when you're starving and you see people you know dying from starvation, sickness, and, and maybe police brutality and things, Taking it out on these people is not right because what happened in the 1930s in Germany is they turned on their 1%. Let's just call it 1%, even though it's not the right term. They turned on this upper echelon of wealthy businessmen and they just decimated them. But what ha the real people that were at the very top didn't get in trouble. In fact, they financed the war on both sides, like George Bush's father. Uh, what was his name? The old Bush. Uh, George Herbert Walker Bush's dad, Prescott Bush, and uh, his buddies. I don't, I wish I knew more of their names offhand, you know. They didn't get in trouble, but all the people under them, like all the CEOs of like JP Morgan and, you know, this company and that company and the congressmen, you know, all these people in Congress that are taking bribes right now, they are going to easily be picked off and thrown under the bus. But the, the real criminals, the ones that are enforcing the Federal Reserve and the Bank of International Settlements, we, we wouldn't, you know, we would miss the point. We would, we, would, we would damage the little guy in effect. So we have to remember that as angry as we get and as pissed off as we are, now I'm not trying to stifle a revolution by saying this, but it's not right to take it out on a sect of people because there's something much more insidious going on. And I think the best thing to do is build a new society. Of course, if you have this group in the shadows that's hiring, you know, private military to come do damage to you, I can only fathom worst case scenarios, and I really don't want to because it hasn't happened yet. But then at the same time, across the world right now in Afghanistan, you could say that a worst case scenario is happening. 
Point is, I don't want to fucking repeat the mistakes of the 30s in Germany by getting racist on the top 1%. It's not their fault, even though they're complicit. And some people are still going to have to be brought to justice. Kind of an overused term in the last six years, right? But we're going to make it happen. So, rather than spewing shit, I'm going to think about this for a second. I think we can repeal the Federal Reserve Act and take a currency, make a new currency with our U.S. government. You know, realistically, the responsibility, I mean, if you spend U.S. dollars, it's funny, I'm talking to a global society, but if you spend Bank of International Settlement money, basically, if, if your money is tied to a central bank, you're complicit. And you have to accept that. I'm complicit. And it sickens me. It sickens me. It drags my soul to the ground. I bad. I very bad. But I be very good. I want to be very good. I kind of want to go to the desert and set up one of these prefab farming communities where I can just go into this giant tent and farm year around and grow strawberries and trade digital currency like bitcoins and litecoins, build solar generators and water towers that can condense water. Hey man, I'm off track, but guess what? In imagination, there are no tracks. Just a bunch of fucking firing neurons. Okay, so we must be deliberate and liberal. See that lib is part of deliberate and liberty. We must be deliberate in our consultation with the enemy, if you want to call them the enemy, and the people that are... pinning us to the ground with money. I was thinking the other day, like, we, we live in a slave society, and I saw this so clear for the first time, that corporations, you know, they're, they, they've been written to be people, to become people. A corporation is now a person, so that the person at the top doesn't have to take responsibility for the corporation's actions, even though they are the one responsible for what the corporation does. They don't take responsibility. They don't get the shit end of the stick. They only have the handle. And that's slave society. We do what, if you're part of a corporation, you do what the CEO says. That's the leader. And they break it up into a kind of an oligarchy or whatever, a plutocracy, where they have a board telling you what to do. You follow the rules, you do what they say, and they give you your pittance, which is your money. And it's, it's a different kind of slave society where there was like a, a plantation owner that would whip the shit out of you and send you to your slave quarters and chains. Now we can actually go to what we think of as our house. But you got to remember, you don't own the money that you use to buy this house. It was given to you by these people. 